Black Death was a disease which spread throughout medieval Europe, but it had its origins thousands of miles away. So how was it able to spread throughout so many different populations across such vast distances and result in such long-term consequences to society? Well, we start with things like war, disease and starvation. They've often been killers of large numbers of people. Now sometimes these events have been linked together. The movement of people during periods of warfare mean that they can carry disease with them. Destruction and devastation caused by wars result in failed crops and result in starvation. With people going hungry, they have lowered ability to fight off the effects of disease. However, the deaths caused by the Black Death went further than those normally expected from those related events. Part of this may be explained by another factor with diseases. That's the number of deaths due to a particular disease is related to the exposure to it. This has two elements, both relating to isolation. You can separate the infected population from the uninfected population, you can stop the infection. However, complete isolation is difficult, especially without modern screening procedures. The problem with isolation though is that most diseases evolve slowly over time. If you or your close ancestors were exposed to a recent version of a disease, you can actually have quite a good chance of being resistant to the worst impacts of that disease. However, if the disease has had time to change radically and you have no exposure to recent versions of the disease, it can be deadly to a high proportion of the population. This happened in the Americas when Europeans brought with them diseases which they were largely immune to, but the local population had no recent exposure to those strains of the disease, and as a result, large numbers of the local population died. The first part of the sequence of events relating to the Black Death, though, seems a rather distant one. The starting point could be considered to be the invasion of China by the Mongols, which started in 1205 till China was finally conquered in 1279. Now, this invasion devastated the Chinese economy, especially farming, in turn led to a dramatic population decline. It took well over a century for the population of China to recover from. It also meant that trade with Europe was disrupted, causing a break in the trade which was going on for over a thousand years on the Silk Road along the previous Persian Royal Road. Now, during this break, the disease which would later be called the Black Death had time to change and mutate. Now, the outbreak of the disease did occur in China, killing a further third of remaining population, starting from probably around 1330. Then it slowly migrated west along the trade routes which were being re-established and also alongside the Mongol armies as they again moved west. Fortunately the records from China at this time were rather poor, so it's difficult to know for certain exactly when and where it started. However, early high profile casualties were Abu Said, the ruler of the Mongol Persia, his sons in 1335, before it eventually reached Europe in about 1346. So why then the disease was it so virulent, it takes so long to travel all the way from China to Europe? Well, there are two elements to this. Now the first is the horse-based Mongol culture, which inhibited the spread of the disease, which I'll go into a little bit more detail later along. Alongside this was the disjointed nature of trade along the Silk Road. Trade along the route wasn't a case of traders carrying wares thousands of miles from China to Europe in a single caravan. Instead, they'd be transported relatively short distance to be sold and be transported again. So it might take eventually maybe a decade or more before it made it to Europe. This meant that light, expensive goods like jewels and silks would most likely be transported. The, the goods could travel tens of thousands of miles. It was going to take that decade or more to actually complete the journey. So only where there were trading settlements when Mongols actually settled down to the camps, like when they conducted the siege of Kappa in the Crimea, the disease spread rapidly. Now there are reports that the Mongols suffered a huge number of casualties during the siege of Kappa, which was the Black Death. However, what is less likely is the reports that the Mongols catapulted corpses into the city in an attempt to spread the disease to the city. Unlikely the Mongols would have treated their own dead this way. Additionally, corpses of Black Death themselves can't actually spread the disease. What is certain though, 
the disease did spread in besiegers to the population within the city. Now, some of those people then boarded the 12 Genoese trading ships which then sailed to the Sicilian port of Messina. However, within the cramped conditions on board the ships, when the ships did arrive, most of the crew were dead and the rest were in a very bad way. Now, the authorities did try to prevent the spread of the disease by ordering the ships out of harbour. It was too late. The disease had already spread beyond the ships. Now, even if measures had been taken to stop the spread of the disease from the ships, it was already heading to Europe, overland from Russia, across from Turkey via Constantinople. But it was only delayed the inevitable. The disease had moved apparently inexorably across Europe. Whilst once some, some areas were devastated, others escaped with only minimal loss of life. So what caused this disparity in the casualties to the disease? Well, the first thing we need to consider is actually the climatic change between the medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age. The change in climatic conditions resulted in crops which had been suitable for the warm conditions either dying, resulting in far lower crop yields in the new, cooler conditions. The result of this was widespread famine and starvation across Europe. Part of the deaths were due to an increase in urbanisation during the warm period. So relatively high farm yields meant that people in towns and cities could be supported from the additional food being grown on the farms. However, when farm yields dropped, it was no longer the food available to feed the urban population. And whilst the worst of the famine had passed by the time the Black Death arrived, large proportions of the urban populations across Europe were seriously malnourished, leaving them vulnerable to the existing diseases like typhoid, let alone what would happen when the Black Death arrived. Rising prices for food and declining supplies, some major landowners and kings in parts of Europe tried actually to maintain their incomes by increasing rents on farmlands. This in turn meant that farm workers couldn't get enough food to eat. Because they were poorly fed, again, they couldn't produce as much food from the farms, so crop yields declined still further, making the food situation still worse. So when the Black Death reached Europe, most of the places Affected had a third or more of their population die of the disease. The northernmost areas of Europe tended to suffer less than the southern half due to the impact of the cold conditions on the, had on the spread of the disease. However, apart from the cold, some areas of Europe suffered far less than other places, even though they were surrounded by other countries ravaged by the Black Death. So, what did these areas do that mitigated the effects of the Black Death? Well, two of these key areas are Poland in the area around Milan. If we take Poland first, rulers of Poland could see how devastating the disease was to other countries around it. So it established quarantine procedures at the borders with the other countries. Whilst it didn't stop the disease, it did mean the disease didn't spread rapidly within Poland. Poland was able to do this without disrupting the economy, so they had only minimal trade with other nations, but not only major land or sea trading routes. Relatively slow spread of the disease and the disruption to food production caused by the deaths of the working population was also reduced. In addition, Poland's population was still widely scattered, and for the most part still rural. There hadn't been the great urbanisation that occurred in other European countries at the time. When the food production was relatively high, the population had a good chance of fighting off the disease if they actually contracted it. With few urban areas closely packed cities, it reduced conditions for the transmission of the disease. And finally, cold weather may also have put an end to earlier spread of the disease. It's, a case, it's not the case in southern Europe. So even with all these measures, Poland still may have lost up to a quarter of its population from the Black Death and associated causes. The other area of interest is that surrounding Milan, where the deaths they actually been half that of Poland, one of the lowest areas of all of Europe to suffer from the Black Death. The city of Milan seems to have escaped the disease almost entirely. Again, strong quarantine measures were introduced, even to the extent of walling up the few people inside their own buildings who contracted the disease. However, even with these extreme measures, they wouldn't have proved adequate against the vectors for the disease. We can't actually explain how Milan escaped a serious outbreak. Logical explanation is either these vectors of the disease somehow didn't enter the countryside around Milan, or the 
people of Milan were somehow immune to the disease. Brings me to the topic I've actually been skirting around. What actually is the disease and how is it transmitted? Well, the specific disease is Yersinia pestis, normally referred to as Y pestis. Bacteria, which when it's inside the human body, suppresses the body's immune response to it, either by changing the coating on the outside of the bacteria, or by physically actually attacking the white blood cells, which normally are attacking the invading bacteria cells. Y pestis then settles in the lymph nodes within the lymphatic system, and it starts immediately to multiply. These multiplying bacteria then can cause the lymph nodes to swell up, resulting in buboes or lumps in the lymph nodes, which is where the name bubonic plague actually comes from. Growing tissues within lymph nodes are ideal for white pestis, except for one thing. They're fairly short of the iron needed for white pestis to grow and reproduce. However, there's a very plentiful supply of iron nearby, shaped for the red blood cells, and by the red the Y pest is releasing a chemical which leashes iron out of the red blood cells. The iron can then be hijacked by the Y pestis bacteria. However, if Y pestis was to remain in the lymph nodes, it couldn't really spread to another host. So enough of it present then migrates towards the lungs, so it can be coughed out over the next victim. At this stage, the body now recognises it's actually under a massive attack and actually reacts to the presence of the Y pestis, or more precisely, it overreacts, resulting in a condition called septic shock, where your body radically alters where your blood is flowing, eventually can result in multiple organ failure. And one suffering from malnutrition or other medical conditions is actually far more likely to die from septic shock than a healthy adult. As one is possible to transmit Y pestis to someone during the final stage of the disease, it's actually quite rare. Some final stages don't last that long, and the infected person is showing some fairly obvious signs of infection well before that. It means that isolating infected individuals and quarantine procedures are fairly good at stopping person-to-person -person transmission of the disease. However, person-to-person -person transmission is only one method of catching the Y pestis. A far more common method is by being bitten by a flea carrying the disease. The bite of the flea bypasses the skin barrier bacteria would find it difficult to penetrate, and from the blood vessels the flea bites into, the white pestis can easily make its way to a lymph node. Fleas themselves though don't travel that far, so the final factor in the transmission of the disease is the black rat. White pestis as well as infecting humans can also infect the black rat, but one flea on a rat has white pestis, that flea can bite the rat and all other fleas on the same rat take up the bacteria from the rat, so it's likely if one flea from a rat is infected, they all are. Black rats also like to associate themselves with the trappings of human civilization. So towns, cities, and even trading camps can have large communities of black rats living alongside them. In addition to this, the white pestis bacteria can also infect some of the animals that humans have domesticated, like pigs, dogs, camels, chickens, lots of domesticated animals. However, the flea that actually carries the white pestic bacteria dislikes intensely the smell of horses. For whilst nomads like the Mongols are travelling with their herds, they're unlikely to contract the Black Death. However, trading stations, especially during sieges where food like pork and chicken is being brought into the cramped, unsanitary conditions of a siege, then the Black Death could spread easily among the Mongols. This contamination is made worse by the Mongols' lack of exposure to the disease. Things react to conditions in and around Milan at the time of the Black Death. It becomes apparent that whilst there were isolated cases within the city, it seems unlikely that the quarantine methods established would stop any infected rats from moving within the city. However, the Visconti family, which ruled Milan and the surrounding areas, were absolute rulers and barred anyone they suspected of carrying disease from entering into the area they controlled. The Milanese people were actually relatively well fed, and the disease reach the area as winter approached. Uh, all of these factors would have slowed the spread of the disease and slightly reduced the number of people who would eventually die from the disease. But the comparatively low number of deaths can't be explained by these factors alone. As yet, there is no comprehensive explanation as to the low death rate from the Black Death. It all remains a mystery. 
Smith's screen might be actually worth investigating, however, even after all these years, if we can find out how Milan escaped the worst of the Black Death, we might actually be able to help contain the spread of other diseases. <laughs>